right about now, we need to put this event into the hands of a man that would call the chairman. And to introduce the chairman, please join me welcome upstage, Santi Browning, under a big hand. She's a powerful woman. She is a great woman. When you look at things happening around the world like this, you know we need more women like these who make men better. I'm not talking about Will Smith or Johnny Depp, but Santa, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, George. Good evening, distinguished guests, family, and friends. We are grateful to all of you for gracing this occasion. Um, the chairman I'm about to introduce is a big one. I couldn't memorize it all. Though I'm old, but my brain is still powerful, I just couldn't memorize it. So it's on the iPad and I'm going to read. So kindly permit me to start my introduction with a quote from Chinue Achimbi, Things Fall Apart. A man who calls his kinsmen to a feast does not do so to save them from starving. They all have food in their homes. When we gather together in the moonlit village ground, it is not because of the moon. Every one of you can see it from your own compound. <coughs> we come together because it is good for kinsmen to do so. So all of us gathered here today, we all have a story to tell. We all come around with our luggage, our own little trolley cases, with our experiences, a good, bad, ugly, with our own biological makeup that make us unique. And we all have a story to tell. But usually we carry it along wherever we go and that makes us unique. But many at times, it's a bit difficult for us to just open the case. But George today has been bold enough to open his trolley case for us to see all the content. That's far, not everything, but to this point. So that's what we are going to do today. And with us, we have a chairman who will grace this occasion for us. That chairman holds a BL from the Ghana School of Law, Legon. He also holds an LLB from the University of Ghana and an executive MBA from Gempa. He was called to the Ghana Bar in February 1997, 25 solid years. He's regarded as one of the country's experts in company and real estate law and handles matters for both local and foreign clients, including some of the country's strongest local entities. This is a strong guy. He is specializing in setting up and structuring of international businesses in Ghana and also provides transaction advisory services. He is an astute advocate and a very consummate negotiator. Hmm. He lectures at the first training arm, the Law Institute. He is a director of many boards and currently he is a chairperson of the National Communications Authority. He also serves as the first honorary consul of Jamaica to Ghana. One loan. He is a traditional ruler and a chie nanahene of Chebi. I'm also from Achim, so, Your Honor. Under the school name of Beri Makwe Pudia, he is married to two children, he's married and has two children and an avid golfer. He knows the good, the bad, and the ugly of George Anda and is a very much part of George's journey. I personally am looking forward to listening to his full disclosure everything that you know just shares with us and parts of George under the what he's put forth so now it is my distinguished honor to introduce to you his excellency Isaac ML Osei Bonsu ladies and gentlemen a big hand for our chairman as he comes up hear everything not today <laughs> good evening honorable minister for information honorable deputy minister for local government distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen all protocols observed when George asked me to come and chair this occasion, I was a bit taken aback because for me, all the book launches that I have been to, the chairman are always 
old men with gray hair. Then I looked in the mirror and I realized I was an old man with gray hair. That's all right. And maybe this is the time for me to also be a member of that small group of chairmen who have launched books. But I've known George for conservatively 45 years. 45 interesting years. And ladies and gentlemen, our friendship, well, it is not a friendship. It is a brotherhood. George is my brother. I mean, everybody in this room who knows me and knows George knows that we are not friends. We are brothers. We have been through a lot. And before I will go into the meat of my speech, which will be brief, though, I'm just amazed at the resilience of Mr. Anger, of George. And, you know, George started off as a science student. If our mates here would have tell you, and when you are in natural school and you are a science student, you are naturally not a very entertaining person. You are supposed to be dull. I'm not saying that he was. Then he went to the university and did science. Came out and did a master's in, in a marketing, a complete switch. First job was selling alcohol. Now, <laughs> George was moving in waves. Then he moved all the way to telecoms. Then he did politics. Now he's doing a little bit of chieftaincy. And I'm thinking, this is a man who has been through many experiences. Some of them, two very difficult ones, as we all know, of some of the very difficult periods that George has been through and has fought. He has been resilient in this fight to be where he is this evening. But I am not surprised that he has fought this hard because when we were kids, we were about nine years old, there was a house next door to his house. They were the noise or whatever. We used to go there and then, you know, uh, box and play football. The terriers. So one day we went to box there. And George was beating up badly. Very badly. He went home and cried for an hour and came back to box again. At that point, we knew the kind of character that Mr. Ander was forming for himself. He has been a man who has always been determined to do more. Hence, we are all here this evening to witness this book. Now, let me go on to my speech. Oh, that wasn't the speech. That was the intro. <laughs> but it's a short one. Basically, it is very critical that we respect literature. Literature that chronicles the experiences of men, especially in the continent of Africa. Because when you do so, you give hope to the African youth. You make them understand that it is possible to be successful in this part of the world. And that the urge to travel abroad, etc., to seek greener pastures could be curtailed or to be reduced to the barest minimum. When people like George write about their experiences, it gives a window into the often closed corporate and politics worlds and provides an almost cinematic frame through which those who want to succeed in the corporate world 
can see what success looks like in that space and how to achieve it. George's book is a must read. And for anyone who is contemplating taking the risk of transition from private life into public life. It is not it, it is not often that you will get books that cover two important facets of every country. The corporate world and the world of frontline politics. This book has a rare combination of both worlds of this book has a rare combination of, of, of uh, both worlds and also provides valuable insights and lessons for us who are going to be the readers. Life is often about successes and failures, and we are defined by how we react to both. George has experienced both great successes and also great challenges, setbacks and failures, how he has reacted in these instances is a template worthy of notice. I'm going to ask all of us in this room, every single person to purchase this book. Ignore the parts about me. They may not be true. You can check with me later. But let this program be a success. Let this program resound in the person that we are celebrating this evening. I wish you all a great evening and enjoy the night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, your chairman. Please, a bigger hand for the chairman. We don't stop clapping for the chairman until he's taking a seat. You know, when the chairman was giving his presentation, every time he mentioned the name George, I felt proud. Imagine if God said, you are going to be, you know, like somebody who shares a name with you. I mean, I'm George, that's an older George. All those good things that were said, it means I have a future. A solid one. But if your name is, say, Patapa, or... Should I go there? Should I go there? Eh? If your name is... Um, the devil is a liar. See <laughs> you later. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Under has touched so many lives. So, so, so many lives. And um, there is a part that has to be in that book. If it is not there, we would have to do a review. Once upon a time, Buster Rhymes came to Ghana. George was CMO at MTN. I was a producer. I was learning how to produce at the time. It was one of my biggest events with Charterhouse at the time. Good evening to my boss then, Mr. Philip Ayesu. Good to know you're here. And they said we had a meeting with MTN. It was for you drew on up a yellow. If they say somebody lives the brand, somebody wears the brand, somebody owns the brand, that is George. The man had dyed his hair yellow, his beard yellow. Unfortunately, the hair no day again, mom, but it was there at the time. And those who saw it, saw it. Jesse, you were there, weren't you? You remember the yellow? Yeah, that was when you went to spray your hair blue when you went to Tigo. But I'm fat. As I was saying, George has touched so many lives, and this evening we've got one of them here to give us a very wonderful performance as we get ready to launch this all-important book. Ladies and gentlemen, my brother and friend, Ochiame Kwame, the rap doctor. Thank you.
to a six year old contract at MTN. And it changed my perspective. <laughs> <phone number. laughs> it changed my perspective on life. It introduced me to business in a different way. And I'll come from Kumase. And you say, Kwame, come and be in my house. I'll never forget this. So inside my book, when I wrote only 10 names of people who have influenced my life, you are a part of it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay. Miss Bonnie will be found. It's in a bonnet for free war. Because I may who say, I dream was singing. Tina bonnet for free war. Because I may who say, I dream was singing. Would you have me honor? The chin chima chin chima chin chima. You know how to sing it. Then you have yourself. We are hitting the house. Which I have been on a machine, she machine, she machine, she my breath. Man, you'll be on several. I will go down. I said, my to me, oh, be kept in my me, or chame, I told me, 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 yo. Me better my grab baby, trap it thirty. Wait, try to ever say, me won the fire by me to buy my hand time a jive. Me my what ya see a woo, won't let me hide. Fami bonny chummy, will be the share. Manuel I'm in the one in the media, I dear me yeah, you want me to see. Who team me down? That cook car, I can't stand it. Now me team in you I'm not so sad, but I get a car. We try many, then so we won't be out just a while. Say, say, we want to be one. Miss me, dear, dear, go for the view or dog. Maji wedi, maji watu, mabre fi koto Afe na me huse, odo mugu a hudwo Udo nye tomatos, mako pebi ato Jimi di se se imene, wane ko Ya mi mo provo konyasa Uja, mihona Me chinchi, me chinchi, me chinchi, mabre Me nyo uya se mo o Mananti, 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 mabre Uja, mihona Me chinchi, me chinchi, me chinchi, mabre Me nyo uya se mo o Nanti, ya, mabre, awu me ya wun ko wade Me pa me hon te te Me di yodon to ma pa A hon pra siyem pa bwa U tun tun se yo Ma ye kra do Me swe gu wa do Ka wa tiyem bwa u Shi yo ba peni Kwa me san seni Mi su ba mponi Wu cha mi be wo su jeni Mi ka yu da mi shi a wona Ma no pupo Me sin so chi ame Wa si di a me toto We mi bo un hunka Go fi si di tiyo do do Nana si da di a do do Me di a do be ya to ma me to Wa ye se su mi ye U ti su ni si re U mi yo wa nupo Ya u se ni a u si si ti ye Me de koto sre kai O ne me fin pa di ye O kwa ki a chwa Tu wa se mi en ya wa ri a pen a Papa dear, you're my shady. Tinde, no see a pepper pepper. Me ne me kuku kaka. Odo, masa baba. Me che highlight, highlight, highlight. Masa na bo, masa na bo, masa na bo. Me no mi wo. Masa na bo, masa na bo, masa na bo. E me no mi wo. Ye pe jam kaka, ye pe jam dance or ye kote. Wa wo ni se agwa ye dano ye koto pa wa se. Se se i wa sa cha wa pe de me ye. I say we plan a make a new year. Now you feel me be a true change, hey man, hey man. Yes, so let the change man go on and do what's up. I'm more busy, yes, I'm more busy, yes, I'm. Now be be a rock, we be a dream, we be a dream. We jam in for me, yes, we don't have to go and see. We say we want to see a guy that know you can't stop our say. Say say we're such a rock, we're ready, we're ready. I say we plan a make a new year. Now you feel me be a true change, hey man, hey man. Yes, so let the change man go on and do what's up. I'm more busy, yes, I'm more busy, yes, I'm. Now be be a rock, we be a dream, we be a dream. Watch out me for me, say yo, now we go with him Masa na bo Masa na bo Masa na bo Me no mi mo Reggie Rockstone in the house Masa na bo Masa na bo Masa na bo Me no mi mo Thank you You see this Cloth will not let me express myself But I wore it intentionally so that I will behave myself. <laughs> because the caliber of people in this room, I can't come here and just be behaving by heart. So the next song is called Sika because I chose this song strategically because 
I need all of us here to know that writing a book is not an easy thing. For a person to sit down and decide to be honest about his life, the pitfalls and the rises, it's important that we support and make sure that the book gets to wherever it's supposed to get to. Your friend is Sika, Yanko. And this is a personification of money interacting with life, with God, with human beings, with love, and with money itself. Marriages, yes, I'm the boss. The people's lack of knowledge is all my fault. And I know I'm wrong, but through negativity, I get strong. It's through this reality that I was born. I leave you with insanity, and I'm long gone. Now, me, I mean, if you get me free, take 10 BC or any kenosis, free to the lead, and then we are seeing your friend in Techie. They tell me, you have a point, send me my word, that's it, and then show me when you bring tea, they'll be grabbed to do me tea, but for who tell me. Man of the moment, my big brother and friend, Nini George Under. A big hand for the man. Please keep clapping for him. That's it. Yep. Yep. I think Abuaji wanted to check his height category when he walked down. Allah. And he was defeated, so he had to back off. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, family, friends, and family friends who are here, family friends are joining us virtually. 
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. First, let me thank you all for choosing to spend your Sunday evening with us here. I have no intention to bore you with a long speech, except to highlight a few things. And Achamui Kwame was talking about, no, it was Abuaji George Kwee. He was talking about how I dyed my beard yellow. He hadn't seen anything then because there were some other really sexy places that were dyed yellow as well. <laughs> and Santi can testify to that. <laughs> My decision to pen down parts of my story has very little to do with me personally. My main motivation was a conversation that I had with Uncle Ebu White about 15 years ago. And the challenge that he threw at me back then, which gave me reason to believe with very firm conviction that the Ghanaian, and most importantly, the African youth, must be convinced to know that everything is achievable once you put your minds at it. Indeed, this may sound like a cliche, but it's also an, an unequivoc unequivocal truth that you and I may face challenges in life. We may face setbacks along our journey, but with prayer, determination, focus, the right network and support, inshallah, we will get there. <clears throat> Uncle Ebo White had challenged me to put out this autobiography by my 40th. But I thought I had a lot more to do at that time. So I pushed it to my 50th. The writing of this autobiography was taken cumulatively over four years to put together. I'd like to say a big thank you to all those who availed themselves to be interviewed, especially Mrs. Patricia Kwedu, who tells the story from the Hagen side, and Mebusia Payne, Dr. Ubu Anda, who tells the story from the under side. No one commits three to four years to a course he or she does not believe in, especially when we had to undertake this task whilst I went through a series of surgeries to correct the aftermath of my accident. And indeed, since COVID can be blamed for everything else, I can also blame COVID for the delay. But I believe that this book which is about to be launched today, contains some very valuable lessons that everyone can add to the arsenal of the life journey. As it is often quoted, we are a sum of our experiences. I, therefore, could not have gathered enough experiences worthy of a book without the guidance of my mentors, my bosses, my work colleagues, my family, my friends, and the numerous individuals that I've interacted with over the years. To you all, I say thank you for helping me get this far. And to my brother, Eddie, who was looking for X-rated portions of the book 
first, everything I learned that was X-rated, please blame the chairman. Secondly, every X-rated portion was removed by Father Charles. So blame him for the missing portions. Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, may I at this moment request your kind permission to be on your feet and observe a minute silence in remembrance of some very special people whom I've written about in this book that are fiscally not here with us today. They are amongst the angels in heaven watching over us. To my parents, John and Teresa Under, to my paternal and maternal grandparents, to my uncle, Dr. Emmanuel Kweku Under, also known as Nenya Andekwe the fifth, my mother-in-law, my former boss, Amar Hamza, my very good friends, George Posu Ampuma, Kofi Amofa Achampung, Bill Kwanza, Benjamin Bruce Tusa, Tiklo, to my mentor, my coach, the great inspiration, Mr. Tobo Mensa, and Honorable Opeabe. Please let's observe a minute silence. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Please be seated. In conclusion, I hope that this book inspires everyone, everyone who reads it, to be better than his or her former self. I hope that it motivates every reader to dare out of his or her comfort zone. And finally, I hope that it ignites the determination to do more and to be more in our hearts and in the minds. Once again, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to all of you for coming. It does mean the world to me. I know. Thank you all also in advance for the big money that you're about to invest in this book. Even as I'm determined to do more. May the good Lord continue to guide us all because the mission is possible. I look forward to interacting with each one of you during the signing phase of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, do enjoy the evening. Thank you. A big hand, ladies and gentlemen. A big hand for him, ladies and gentlemen. I was trying to get him to speak from there, but he insisted. He said, no, the people here are too wonderful. I cannot speak from my seat. I would have to mount the stage like everyone else, even with a stick. Ladies and gentlemen, a big, a big, a big, 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 big hand again. If we've heard from the author, I think it's about time we launched the book properly. What do you say? Oh? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the president is here. A big hand for the president. Oh, I mean Red Rock Stone, hip life president. <laughs> oh, the other one. No, 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 no. I'm talking the hip life president, so. Reggie, Akwawa. Again, we're going to look at the screens as we get ready to unveil or launch the book. And then I'm going to invite my boss 
to, you know, direct the affairs from now till then. Please get ready to go into your wallets and your checkbooks and everything else. This is the part that we get to show our love to Big George Under. Let's see the video. Shall we have the lights down, please? So we have the lights down, please. Ladies and gentlemen, now that this has shown on the screens, I'll crave your indulgence. A big hand, please. A big hand. I'll humbly ask our chairman, our chairman, uh, two ushers, so that we can unveil this, then we'll get to see the books. Chair, if you can please. Um... Then you can um, officially. In the presence of the Honorable Minister and Mr. Gadilai, I do hereby declare the book determined to do more duly, duly launched. Round of applause. Thank you. When I saw the book earlier, I was like, boy, this is huge. Then somebody whispered to me that this is only volume one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I did tell you my boss will be taking over from this point. This is the part where we get to show our love. This is the part where we get to show our commitment. Get ready to dig deep. We are going to see those who are going to be purchasing these books right now. I'm going to be buying one. Body and Pinion Ford and At this point, please join me. Welcome upstage. The one and only Chairman General, Kwame Sefakai. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you all very much for coming out tonight for George. I am quite happy that um, my brother from about 40 years ago is the chairman, and uh, I'll tell my story when I ask him to buy a few books for a very handsome amount of money. I'm happy to see you. I hope that in spite of your traditional title, and the fact that you are board chair of uh, an industry I work in and you can actually make me unemployed by decreeing that the license should be revoked, I believe that I can take a few liberties and still call you Awagu. Ladies and gentlemen, I noticed that um, to his right is a colleague who I can no longer call a colleague because he's a big man now. He's the minister in charge of my sector. And I'd like to invite Mr. Kojo Ponkroma, who is Member of Parliament for Fuasi Arabi and Information Minister, to take us through the book reading. Kojo, good evening and welcome. A big hand, ladies and gentlemen. You 
know, when you're in a room with so many Catholic priests and they invite you to the podium, it feels like you're about to read the Bible. But I think the last four or five days, I've had the opportunity to read this entire book. And it confirmed for me a few things. In fact, the first reason for which I agreed to, to do a review and to read this was because, George, I wanted to find out if all the stories I had heard about were true. And indeed, they are true. And then the second reason was that Madame Elizabeth Ohine had said that this was a story of a young man who saw the possibilities of mobile money long before anyone believed Ghanaians could be persuaded to appreciate the merits of cashless transactions. And I was thinking to myself, so indeed you are the guy behind the ELV experience we had in this country. But on a more serious note, the, 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 the reason for which this book excites me um, dates back to 16 years ago when um, I was given the challenge of hosting a breakfast show on Joy FM. And the gentleman who had hosted it prior to that, Komla Dumont, had done it for about 10 years and had so much experience. And I spent my first two years just messing up. I was a hopeless starter, despite the fact that my management kept encouraging me. And I kept thinking to myself, if only Komla had left me a book. If only Komla had left me something that outlined his experiences, maybe by mistakes would be less. And for me, it is critical that people who've been through various things, corporate, politics, many other facets of life, leave something that can open a window to those who want to follow that path to understand. I want to read from pages 233 to about pages 223 to 233. And they talk about George's decision to enter politics and the battles and the advice that he ought not to enter politics. And it says from the last paragraph of page 223, says, when I decided to participate in active politics, someone who thought I was making a bad decision sent me what he called 10 reasons why politics was not good for me. To him, the things associated with active politics do not confirm do not conform to my personality and my principles, and hence, I should stay away from them. I reproduce his reasons just as he sent them to me. In politics, you must understand the following. One, nobody has your interest. Two, everybody is chasing their interest. Three, dealing with politicians is like sleeping with tigers. You must always have your eyes wide open. Four, and this is one of my favorites. In any political equation, there's always someone being used. If you look around and you can't find that person, then it is you. <laughs> Five, serving politicians is like a bandage on a wound. Once the wound is healed, your usefulness ends. Six, in politics, never will more than the bereaved. They will get the reward while you inherit their enemies. Seven, in politics, in any event, if other interests conflict with your interests and you have to choose, always choose yours. Number eight, never cross oceans for politicians. You may drown. And it goes on and on. But then he concludes... And that is where the real lesson is. He says that as much as I understood the sentiments he raises in the above pointers, the question I ask myself is, if not me, then who? Whether we like it or not, democracy is what we have allocated to ourselves. We therefore need people to take an active interest in it. It is unfortunate that how some politicians have conducted themselves over the years has probably given credence to these sentiments expressed earlier. And George goes on to say that we need to change these sentiments. The people must have belief in the system of government because that is the only way true development can occur. I was motivated to contribute my part in making politics attractive to people like me, and indeed to all Ghanaians, and to the best of my ability. That is exactly what I've tried to do ever since I became part of frontline politics in Ghana. 
While contesting for the Utu Senior West Parliamentary seat, I prepared and shared my message with the voters, a copy of which is found in Appendix 1. I'm working hard to live by that message, hopefully with God on my side. The journey has not been easy, as I have stated. Nonetheless, I'm still soldiering on. I came into politics with my integrity intact, and I intend to keep it as such. The sad thing, though, is keeping your integrity is one of the most difficult things to do in Ghanaian politics. While I strive hard to serve and execute my duties with the best of intentions, some people would do anything for political expediency. I've had my fair share of attempted maligning and soiling of my integrity. For instance, on July 22nd, 2020, NDC TV posted a picture of me hoisting a gun and captured it, we will shoot and kill. We are determined to kill every NDC supporter we see. George goes on to talk in the book about who posted it. I want you to read that work for yourself. He goes on to talk about his phone call with that person who posted it directly and the amazing response the person gave him. As to why someone would retrieve what was an old picture at a traditional ceremony and put a caption like this on it and seek to portray him as such, he says, only God and good conscience can tell. But then he proceeds to give credit to this person saying that after I drew his attention to the real facts, he apologized to me personally and pulled down the picture from his Facebook wall. He goes on to recount many incidents in politics, some of which I am sure will make people cringe as they read. But to end my little reading of the book, I want to read from page 231, where despite the challenges in politics and what he has seen firsthand, he goes on to talk about his hope for our democracy. He says, every country needs a system of government based on which its citizenry can self-actualize. In Ghana, we have had colonialism, dictatorship, and democracy as our systems of government over the years. By all standards, democracy provides a better avenue for the citizens of a country to be happy and attain their goals in life. Under a dictatorship, for instance, our fundamental human rights, such as rights to life, personal liberty, safety, dignity, and freedom such as freedom of association and freedom of movement, among others, tend to be curtailed and infringed upon. As for colonialism, it's even a non-starter. No group of persons has a right to claim superiority over another. And this leaves us with democracy as the most viable system of government for our country. Don't get me wrong, democracy is not perfect. Indeed, it is very imperfect. And again, he goes on and on to explain his difficulties with democracy but yet his hope that we can improve our democracy. The last two paragraphs I'll read, he says that by the time this book is out, I will be over 50 years old. When I look back, I have no regrets about deciding to stay in Ghana and to help build this country. Neither do I have any regrets about entering politics and directly serving my country. In the next decade of this country's life, I hope to see a democracy where national interest, not partisan interest, forms the basis of every discourse. I want to encourage you to get a copy and to read for yourself many of the stories that a lot of people would narrowly not tell you. And for those who aspire to follow his tracks, it will be a good foundation on which you can build your future. Congratulations, George. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Kuju Opongkrumah. You know, when you stand here and you open the book like this, you feel like a man of God. Especially today being Sunday. I was lucky, early on in the day, I got a copy of the book. And... Flipping through, I got to page 143, and I found something quite interesting. There's a backstory to it, but I'm not going to bore you. I'll just read what I found that I thought was quite interesting. We were also sure that our lead characters for the advertisement, the main actors of the Water Water campaign, including my brother and good friend, Mr. Kwame Sifakain, the chairman general, were properly briefed, fully on board, and prepped for this all-important comeback move, it has to do with Guinness um, Stout. Uh, Guinness Extra Smooth, exactly. Water, water. We were, however, in for the shock of our lives. 
on the morning of the recording, Chairman General and the other main characters were not on set at the call-up time. Their phones were switched off. All attempts to reach them proved futile. In the end, we had to shoot the advert with David Donto, Ganaman, Patenton, Papani, Papa Fio, Sofagos, and others. Of course, a change in the main characters diluted the whole big endorsement idea of the advertisement. As to the reason why Chairman General and Co. decided not to turn up on the... We wanted to grow the Guinness brand. <laughs> and the challenge that we had at that time was that people were saying the drink was too bitter. And at that time, people were beginning to trade off value. So they were going for more liquid. So we tested this liquid in the labs. It passed all the tests. I mean, in blind tasting, it was... We got Reggie Rockstone as the ambassador for Guinness Extra Smooth. Then, people in this room, including Gedilai, they, they were pushing Castle Most out. Three, three months after launching Guinness Extra Smooth, Casimir Stout was dipping. We were happy. Reggie was happy. <laughs> some afternoon or some evening, I got home. Chairman General and his people had done an advert. Hey, <laughs> Samuel, you should be percent of Misa. They had gone to do an advert that, oh, Guinness extra smooth. When we brew the Guinness, the under, then we pour water inside. <laughs> they run this ad. When you go to the bar, people stop drinking Guinness extra smooth. You see where Guinness is here. Oh! We tried, tried, tried. We changed label. Then, is Mrs. D here? Mrs. D. Mekatu's award. <laughs> went to sit, went to plan her. They said, oh, why not let the people who did that water, water, no, come and do the Guinness one? So, Ija, Chairman General is my friend. I call Chairman General. He said, it's a nice idea, but it's a problem. <laughs> At that time, I think the budget that Mr. Frank Damele had given me and Mrs. D, I can't remember how much exactly it was, but let's say it is X. So, Chairman, we, we briefed Chairman General how the advert was going to happen. We flew down the crew from London. They came, we did uh, everything that we were supposed to do the night before. Mr. Damale said, those your friends, have they taken money? I said, no, sir. Go and give them money. <laughs> so I called Chairman General. I met up with him at FA's, Spintex Road. I said, Chairman General, your money do so. <laughs> he said, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I call Mrs. D. I call Frank Damale. The man doesn't want to take the money. Frank Damale said, Double it. I said, Chairman General, my boss said I should double the money. <laughs> Chairman General, I'm going to make a few calls and come. He came back. When I come on set the next day, I'll take the money. I said, No. Mr. Damale said, Take the money now. I called Mr. Damali. He said, triple it. <laughs> Still, Chairman General said, George, you are my friend. I say, when I come on set, I'll take the money. I didn't know they had better his mind that he won't come on set, so he won't take the money. But let him tell the story himself. <laughs> Give it up to Chairman General. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Chairman, over to you. Ladies and gentlemen, honestly, I'm very honored that 
I got a mention in George's book, even though it's a very inglorious mention. <laughs> he doesn't say very nice things about me in the book. And I'm surprised that he still insists that I, actually I read that phrase, he says, I still haven't given me a convincing answer. But you see, my brother, <laughs> my upbringing, a Korean presby boy, so the man picking, they say if it is not for you, don't take it. <laughs> and if you know George Anda, if there's any word stronger than relentless, that's him. 4.30 a.m., George Anda will call me. Bro. And then he starts playing emotional blackmail. Yeah, but you know, say me, we'll go way back. And you remember, say, even 99, say, if I give you some MC job for Cape Coast. <laughs> no, this was, this was bad. Today, we're laughing. But he strained our friendship for more than 10 years. Oh, yeah, George will not speak to me. So if you know George, he's passionate about everything he does. So George will not speak to me. Meanwhile, at a point in time, my wife was working with him, and he and her were like that. But the problem was me. So I remember when my wife and I had a child, George actually met my wife in the office. I said, oh, Charlie, congratulations, and actually gave her money. Me. You see me for airports, if you make like you know me. Hey. So what's the story? Mr. Gedilai. <laughs> Mr. Gedilai, you brought all of this on me. I am sitting by somewhere several years ago. This is it's more than 15 years. I'm sitting by somewhere. Then Mr. Gedilai comes and says, you and uh, Master Richard should come and be um, models for Castle Milk Start, a new drink from South Africa to rival Guinness. The money was good, let me be honest. The excitement was there. We shot the ad. George, in his typical, he counted. Then we went back to the drawing board. Then the ensue agenda came. It was this man. <laughs> Today I'm doing all my confessions. It was this man. Because then he was like, Charlie, Guinness people, they be hard. Oh. And if you work with Gedilai before, he will just throw the idea and he doesn't care whose interpretation of it is executed. As long as we all get the credit, it's fine. So the institution thing came. Today I'm telling you where it came from him. And then we started playing around it. So when we threw the institution in, George had to back Landa. He said, hey. Now George calls me and starts the emotional blackmail thing. Yeah, you remember the time we had it for SG before I go for, uh, I remember, I'll give you work, Charlie, bro, we do this as here. Now, George, let me ask you. Here I was, your friend, your brother, your buddy. But I had gone to sign another assignment against you. I had gone and floated it. It was either my friendship with you or with Gedi and our brother, Bill Kwanza, who was going to be with the fathers. It was either your money, three times, or my integrity. What would you have done? A big hand, ladies and gentlemen. What would you have done? The money was good, though. George Anders stood there, and in less than 10 minutes, had given me three times what Mr. Gedilai was paying me. I said, hey, Anyakea. And it was tempting, let me be honest. And I was much, much younger than I am today. And so you could do all the things and apologize later. But I stood there, I looked in George's face. Then I checked my smoothness level. <laughs> so the only excuse I had was, Charlie, tomorrow when I come set, I go take the money. And then George is standing there looking at me. He's just looking. You know, half of him didn't believe what I was saying, but half of me was like, okay, I'll trust the friendship. And all of me was like, I'm betraying the friendship tonight, man. <laughs> and so, George, 
That was my dilemma. Two friends of mine, George on this side, the late Bill Kwanzaa on that side. Gedilai, my one of my mentors, supervising it. And plenty money. George, what should I have done? I had no choice. I chose my integrity. <laughs> Else today, you'd be like, wait. When it turned off here, it turned off here. That was my difficulty. But you know, as I mentioned, George and I had a very frothy relationship afterwards. Understandably. Because he had told his boss that, oh, Kwame is my, he's not my, he's my guy. I'm bringing him on board. Unfortunately, he didn't achieve that. And uh, I'm sure he had his own repercussions. I say this to the memory of Bill Kwanza. Bill Kwanza was the brand manager at the time for Castle Milk Stout, just as George was in charge of Guinness. And these were two friends. Who, George and Bill were like that. Trained by the same person who created the coup d'etat. All of them were trained by Gideli. And one fine morning, George and Bill, who had patched up now and were working together in an organization, came to my office for an interview. And when they came, Bill was like, today, the three of us should close this matter. And I said, George, you need to talk to me on. Then George is like, who's hand to talk plus you? Who's hand to talk plus you? So we sat like brothers. And we decided, look, guys, it's been so long. We can't carry this thing forever. So George says, Kwame, I forgive you. And I forgive Bill. And I also said, I forgive you too for starting a fight with me. <laughs> and so now it was Bill and I on one side forgiving George. <laughs> And he on another side said, Charlie, you know, and you were very magnanimous that morning. Let me, let me be honest. In spite of all the pain I caused you, George was like, okay, you know what? Let's close this chapter of our lives. And we shook hands like brothers, hugged. And then they came into my studio now for me to interview them. I'm saying this part because... <laughs> Let's make love, not war. Life is too short. That night. That night. Bill Kwanza died. Yeah. Yeah. That night. He died. It's as if he was waiting for us to make peace. That night. He left. He went home. He didn't wake up in the morning. The first person who called me was George. Grief stricken and shaking. I still remember that call. <sighs> Forgive me. George was like, Charlie, our man died. I'm like, who? See, Bill died. See, how? Yeah, Bill no wake up. So rest in peace. Thank you. <clears throat> so lessons learned. Let's make love. Life is too short. You never know. George, I'm happy to be here today. I've told you my story now. I know you've forgiven me. And to make you further forgive me, I'm going to try and make money for you. <laughs> So Nenyi, George, and I determined to do more an autobiography. We have ashes around and they are pledge cards. And um, as I mentioned earlier, ah, Zainuka, Chai, you pay me. At the camera, the two of them were a target. Abu, I swear, you and Zay are me in your life. Today, George in book launch. I go wound you. I will go wound you. Ah, he says, I'm not a man of integrity. 
I am giving you advance notice. That is a man of integrity. Mechanocratic. <laughs> Tonight, every time I've had to do this, sometimes it looks as if the author is, forgive my expression, begging for money. He's not. A lot of times, to be able to put such a project together takes a lot. I'm sure you did your research, consulted people, paid writers, did that, this, that. Yes, we need to take care of the bills. But we need to also say congratulations to you. And we need to empower you to do more. And the only way we can empower George is to dip into our pockets. At the end of it all, I love you, George. I love you, George. And crack is saying. And I see we have quite an interesting selection of very prominent, distinguished people here. And so, since Mr. Isaac Emil Osei-Bonsu, Bema Kwekudia, has accepted the chair, I believe that is only natural, normal, sensible, that we allow him to make an offer that we can refuse or accept. And so, I'd like to start the auction. And... Let's all remember we're here to support George. That's all it is. I see Mr. Joe Ampofo, who is with Enterprise Trustees. He's a big man there. He's tried to hide. But if you know him, such a large person, I wonder how he thinks he will hide. Oh boy, if you bend, you stand, you roll over. I don't say you did it. We are merely the city of I see him before I see you. Ras Murak. I hear you don't like me very much these days. You go by the bookstore. You go by, you sit front row. So, Bema. The author, we've created space for you over here. So, at this point, very kindly, we'll ask that you go. And so, if any of us would like for him to sign, I'm sure would, you wouldn't mind an autographed version of Determined to Do More. It says, Nini George Under, an autobiography, Determined to Do More, The Mission is Possible. When you have friends in high places and then they become higher than you knew them, you're not too sure how to address them. This is a man who at age 12 was doing Michael Jackson like nobody's business. And if you know, I will go very well. I mean, if you know, Reggie Rockstone is lean. Reggie is a dancer. But I mean, our go is not exactly lean. We are in the same category. So Reggie does Michael Jackson, and you're like, yeah. But I will go to do some serious Michael Jackson. You know? But you see, oh no, yeah. The body moves. <laughs> when he's backsliding, you can tell that Part of his body is going and the other is on his way. <laughs> Nana, Onkwaso. We shall start the auction with our chairman. Nana, make me an offer I can refuse to accept. For two. For George. You went to form one with George in 1982, sometime September, October. Of course, it's emotional blackmail complete. I don't deny it. Because in June 1987, you both wrote O-Levels. Yes. I happen to be your mate, except that I was on the other side. Nana Minchasu. All three of us were born in 1970. George in April, me in June, you in July. Nana, this is your brother. Unia complete. Yeah, oh, my favorite. Nana, at this point. Uh, I hear I should even put this aside for your sake and give you the special hard copy. Unyana Kayo. Nana also Kayo, no? Nana Pachosi. Mpachosi, Nana Kayo. 
Nana wa nu him 10,000 US dollars. Nana meet me beside Rivio. Beautiful. A big hand ladies Rivio. and gentlemen. Ah, I go watch that dog. I go watch that dog. I go go join Nana dance. Yami shao. On to come. On to ska. On to see some thing. On to watch it on the wom. Yami shao. You will be on Let's give man a round of applause. You know, when I had the 10,000, I didn't wait for the ending. So I was going to be like, no. That's an answer. 10,000 years. We say, yeah, do we see here? Yeah. None of that. None of that. Minister, what? Uh, this one too for minister into hard copy. Uh, it make like the hard copy for show sure hard. <laughs> minister, we'll be on small. You see in Ghana, my good grandma Elizabeth Ohini wrote something that says, "Hello, Davi, my daughter, We want them to be corrupt. I don't want them to steal. Something like that." This was about three or four years ago. I remember that article. So when you become a big man, whether you like it or not, our expectations of you are very high. And you know it. And as Grandma Lizzie wrote, we want them to be corrupt or want them to steal. I don't remember their title very well. So typical Ghanaians, we don't care where you got the money from. As long as you're a big man, you have to pay. With mm -hmm. you. What's in a nine channel? And I'll be a book reading. And I'm not my 10,000 US. And you're cool for the US Biden. Would you know, so say, Becca, I can say, where you are buying cigar? Those of us who know you know you were a man of substance before you went into parliament. But you see, this is how we are as a people. We always say, oh, it's government money. By the time where you did law school, they hustle, nobody remembers that. Yeah. By the time you take your first case, collect your small money, nobody remembers that. By the time you drop in this affair, they say, it's for money. But as you, whether you thief or you know thief, we will say you thief. Minister, make us an offer we can reject or accept. Nanyi George under an autobiography determined to do more, the mission is possible. How much you will give us? No, I didn't ask you to do more than him. I'm asking you to make us an offer. So, Five years. Five years. I'm coming to you next, so, so get ready. Kojo for one count. Six thousand US dollars. Kojo upon Kroma. Information Minister, thank you. Mr. Lai, you caused the problem between George and I. You created a rift between a very good friend of mine and myself. But I was very happy to save you. And in all of it, you also you showed us all the intricacies of marketing, media, creating brands and killing brands. For the three, well, four years that I worked with you, I learned a lot. I'm not sure any university or any academic institution would teach me such juju and tricks. Mr. Lai, thank you very much. But because of you, George refused to speak to me for years. And Mr. Lai, when I was doing the peace talks with the late Bill Kwanza, who, in fact, the two of them are your protégés, you were not there. Today is payback time. We'll be very happy to take an offer from you, sir. You know, life is interesting. Here's Gedilai referring to Bema Kukwekudia and Kujo Ponkroma as his superiors. 
I'm sorry? When it comes to this one, he said they are superiors. <laughs> Meanwhile, when he set up MMRS, we were still in secondary school. <laughs> this is a lie. Okay, you do half of whose? Maybe you should do half of Bema Kwekudiers. Because the three of us will be your small brothers light years away crowd. If you say you be fine man, so if you say you be young man, but you know should I be young man like that. So 5,000 US dollars, Mr. Gary Lai, thank you very much. Let George sign for him now. Mr. Lai, thank you very much. Any more hard copies? So, for those of us who remember George, during his marketing days, I am sure that the organization that benefited the most from his expertise, and everything else was MTN. Salam, are you there? You also have the ad book marker for you. The yeah, Adam. I have been informed that you for pay plenty. Because the building in which you are today, people like George laid the foundation for you. And happily, you moved in and you've even taken it further and higher and better. And so since you're here, the man, uh, did, you, did you talk about when he dyed his beard yellow? George, George, was that the only thing you dyed yellow? Should we check with Santi or something? Is Santi here? Okay. We'll check. But tonight, I'm offering you this copy. First of all, as your personal copy, and then also as the chief executive officer of MTN. Make me an offer. Else I'll make you an offer. And my offer will be in the region of Bema Kwekudia and above. Because I know you're a man worthy of something like that so don't allow me to ambush you you make me an offer <laughs> you see the problem you have right now is that you want to match the ministers but you seem to have forgotten that the chairman is also the chairman of nca so if you match the ministers, you'd have respected the chairman of NCA. If you match the chairman too, then you will be like, okay, not bad. And the chairman has just nodded two times. And he says, I agree. You what? Well, he says, it's an instruction to you that you should outdo him. In fact, if you like, for tonight, disrespect him. Even if you might defy his orders, at least for tonight. So, your, your chair says, outdo me and disrespect me, at least for tonight. Mr. Adadevo, MTN, make me an offer that will disrespect the ministers and I'll do the chairmen. Chairman, at this point, chairman says you go up two notches. He's, he's instructing me honestly. So should I say it? Tell him he's biting his teeth, biting his tongue, claps his hands. Eight. Uh, did you say ten? You, you said ten. Eight thousand US dollars. M T N. Tell him thank you for allowing me to disrespect you tonight. Thank you. Thank you so so very much. So, I happen to be involved in a group that has George as well. Uh, Mpacho, I know Ifiapia is here. I know Philip Ayusu is here. I know Edi Usu is here. 
I know Richard the name is here. Start warming up. No boy in our can you bring you be pra Yamba for concert. Ah, George. Nay. By your brother be MD of Banco. Or oh. they are the ones collecting the money. They are MD money go go there some. Ah, you know we copy. Baby copy. You know we Bank of Africa. Oh. But black copy the sit here somewhere. Yeah, hey, my small brother write the book. So you make a bottle. You can't sit down. We respect to Igwe. Now we they sell the book. It's no longer small brother matter. It's business. Where your bank to they collect the money. Yeah. Hey. Kobi, you did you so. You turn a dollar to dollar so. MD of bank there, you get money. Mm. That might be true. Bank MD. Ah, you get money. And I've known you for so long. Oh, Mr. Red Watson is here. Former ambassador to China. Director General SIGA. State Interest and Governance Authority. I hear your business is doing well because you're here. Mr. Watson, good evening and welcome. You came at the very right time, very opportune time. We're asking for money. And we'll definitely ask you for some. Gerald, thank you very much for pointing him out. But Gerald, but you work for mining company, Ally. But you work for mining company. I beg, give us some more money. It be for Nanyi. It be for Nanyi. I beg, you, you will give us some more. You go bring Mr. Boatin, come to come. You do inside. Kobe, how much are you supporting your brother with? I haven't asked you to read rules and regulations. I said, how much are you helping your brother with? Ah. Ah, you two have quoted in dollars. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Kobe. And the 5,000 US dollars. <laughs> uh, well, on the Bank of Ghana's website, are some things quoted in dollars. So, but they say we shouldn't quote in dollars. <laughs> anyway. The same which invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am sure that when figures like ten thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, three thousand dollars are thrown around, six thousand dollars, some are like, "Hey, can we play this game?" We all can, as they say, "Kitwebien sa." And so, we just need everybody's commitment, everybody's support tonight to support this project. He probably would do a sequel. You never know, part two. But whatever it is, we want to support his effort. And as I said, I mentioned a few names here. Mr. Philip Aesu, Mr. Diosu, Mr. Richard Enim, Mr. Fia Pia, who now teach to the tutu to platforms also. When you start whipping everybody into life, we will pay money. Because you are not going to be on your platform. So you say, George, you are not going to be on your Anyway, so, whilst we are at it, not to bore you too much, because sometimes when you are asking for money, you become a bit of a bore. People don't want to know anymore. Mr. Brown, good evening. Nice to know you are in the crowd. I see you and my sweetheart. Ladies and gentlemen, I will begin to take what I may want to call other offers. There are just a few people here I can comfortably bully and get away with. The rest I can't. I have to show respect. And so keep my credibility intact. Let's move. If there are any others who would like to make an offer, I am willing to accept. So let's show by hands those who would like to support this. Onya Yamanai. Or the two bomb you ever caught two so i've left leadership to you mr philip ayusu what do we do yes a hand up to the left ah ah is that dr lindsay is that dr lindsay oh brother nyamisho jl properties 
5,000 US dollars. JL Property, Dr. James Atolinse. Thank you, sir. 5,000 US dollars. Hello. So, um, Dr. Odis Lindsay is my very good friend. We we're all in the biochemistry class in tech. And he's mentioned in the book. When I was in tech in Republic Hall, I was the entertainment chairman for my hall, Republic. And during the whole week, we decided to do something very dramatic. So we decided that we'll bring Kojo Entry to campus, first time ever. And it was a hit. So Atu, being my very good friend, was sitting on the front row with me. And at that time, he had just left some his girl being tech. And the girl was very, very bitter. So whilst Kojo and Chi was rocking us, we started hearing some memory from the back. And Kojo and Chi was playing, Wumpe Mia Menda Da Mio. And this girl started dancing from the back with a white handkerchief. Came to our front, went down. Atu, don't worry. You will do more. <laughs> but whilst I'm here, let me also say one more story that's also in the book. My brother, Okoko is not here. Asala. Okay, so people keep on asking why Okoko came to tech for three weeks and stopped tech. Oko Christ was my roommate in tech, first year. All of us had just gone to London to go and work and got some small money, so we had bought sound system, we had bought new records. And first year students, we come like three, four days before the continued students come. So Oko Christ, myself, and Tintin were in our room. We had mobile AC, we had carpet. Our room was posh, it was the room to be. So, and we had our friends in Africa Hall. Most of the Achimotans were in Africa Hall. So when the continuing students came, alums, Posu, the late Tiklo, Crazy, um, Tawa, as soon as they came to dump their things in their rooms, they went to Africa and went to meet the girls there, the first year students. And unfortunately, they went to the room of the girls that were in Achimota with us. So they asked them, oh, so who are your friends in Republic Hall? Oh, Okoku is Tintin George. Okoku is Tintin George. And at that time, Republic Hall, around 10 p.m., the pumps go off. So the water doesn't flow. You have to have your bath before 10 p.m., Otherwise, you have to fetch water and have your bath after 10 p.m. But we didn't know what was going to happen that night. So we all slept. And after 10, we heard some banging on the door. And my roommate, Tintin, I don't know whether he thought there were armed robbers or what. He just went to, went to open the door. And these guys, about seven of them, came into our room. They went to turn on the sound system and they started dancing. Ah, you people everywhere we go in Africa, they are mentioning your names. Today, dear, we go hear you water. You know, in secondary school, when some senior is worrying you, you tell him that, oh, you give him sardine. <laughs> so we too, fresh from secondary school, we told these guys, you know something, let us give you sardine. They say, ah, the London that you went with, we've gone there. 
If you want, you come to our room, we'll give you sardine. We begged nothing was going to happen. So these guys marched us to the pond. Another time, it was the rainy season in Republic Hall. The frogs had laid their eggs in the pond. Tadpole eggs. The one that is tricky, plus the tadpoles themselves all over the pond. And then these guys told us that we should sit down on the floor. Then they themselves jumped into the water and they started swimming. <laughs> that day, <laughs> Okoku said, George, this one we die. <laughs> the ponding that they ponded us that day, the water that we drank, and there was no water for us to wash down. So when we came back to the room, Tinti removed that pool from his hair. I removed some from my skin. Oko removed some from somewhere. He made us mellow small. Unfortunately for Oko, the next day he went to Queen's Hall. And they went to do the same thing to him there. That evening, Oko came to the room. I won't continue this school. <laughs> Unfortunately for Tintin and I, we had nowhere else to go. Apart from tech, we have nowhere else to go. Oko stopped tech and he went to continue his school in London. But Oko, there are more stories in the book, so please, if you want to hear of these stories and more, please buy the book. I'd like to recognize the presence of my personal, very special grandma, Madam Elizabeth O'Haney, please give it, her, give it up to Grandma. Grandma, thanks for coming. Ogo, okay. small point there, you run away, go London. <laughs> Ogo, okay, since you've been thrown under the bus, let me push you further. <clears throat> hey, small point there, you run away, go London. They can't buy a book. Uh, Kumi Preko. How much you go buy? Otherwise, I go make the boys come back and point you. <laughs> anyway, as I mentioned, I moved to an area where I'd like to take offers from all of us here present. Mr. Joan Puffo. Good boy. Alpha. The equivalent of $2,000 now be how much? Better thing, reduce camp seven. Seven something. Or for do I'm eight. If you quote CD, I go aggregate time dollar. If you quote dollar, I go happily take up. Half a. But I tell you, I go wound you. Your senior, our good day here. Our good pay, thank you. Don't do that. Huh? He's a lawyer of truth. A lawyer of what? Oh, he's a lawyer of repute. Hey, but, ah, he chopped lawyer almost 30 years now. Quite, they tell our good 10 lawyer. The way we will not get here. <clears throat> 90. Was it five? 96. Hey, we they call our good to the bar. Hmm. We way we know I'm no. Now I'm a man the car. I said, me a lawyer, no, no. So you are also an insurance practitioner of extreme repute. Ain't he? Ah, Sonny George Komotam, I know you were senior. He was my senior, yes. Okay. Yes. Hey, George. George said you've been a small boy. Mm. Oh, you looked after him in Motown. And you become an insurance executive of repute. In fact, high repute. Half a $2,500. I won't argue. I won't argue. Mr. Joe Ampofo, thank you very much. George, your small boy has come through. He showed you love. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. A few more, and then we'll wrap up. And, um, oh, yeah, what is it? I hear you. You bet you will be a bit. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take any offer 
that will support Project Nini George Anda tonight. Rasenberg, don't tell me, say, you know the work. What's the info? Who? Which Obi? Hey, Obi Amade. Oh, Ravani. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going and they say in Kani Bibri, Ras Mubarak has brought me home to your house. Because I was actually going to break down his door. And then he says, you have a much stronger door. And then he added that to his senior prefect. We all agree. Uh, yo. Oh, true. It all be true, true. Hey, this is no smash where they hide human being. Who's a woman here, Papa? Hey, Papa, Papa, in the same room. Mba Joseph. Mba Joseph. Ah, on the set, who constitutes back, I say, who pay new ball hole? Hey, working in the public space is difficult. Because if it is reported that he gave X amount, you'll be like, eh, and you can't stop here, but stop my one, you know. We will respect your privacy. Obi Amwa, MP, Deputy Minister, undisclosed amount, and we say thank you. Nay, we just have a pledge from Mr. Edward Boateng, one time Ghana's ambassador to China, and then also. The Chief Executive of SIGA, the State Interest and Governance Authority, he has pledged 1,000 US dollars for the book. <laughs> Mr. Boate, thank you so very much for this kind gesture. As I mentioned, the young ladies are around here somewhere. If you'd like to pledge, we'll gladly take it. Let's do maybe five more copies and then we'll wrap up. So, any more offers, any more pledges? Okay, so, is this my last one? My very last one. Somebody take it on me, please. Yes, sir. 1,000 US dollars. Thank you very much, sir. We'll have it up again. And so, the first two copies I started with. Mr. Aizu, take one of me for the entire group, $1,000. Hey, you have $1,000, it's more money than me. Share. Thousand dollars better than how. So, thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate time spent with you. Thank you very much for supporting George. And thank you very much, especially also for dipping into your pockets to support this project. Chairman, thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you also very much. You've done great, 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 great. And um, I see some familiar faces in the creative space. Um, I see Reggie Rockstow and I see my brother Ignis Hego. Make we two contribute and do some 500 Ghana. And uh, yeah, fuck a cram boo boo man. Say dollars, dollars now. Yeah, boy, dollars. Jesse, Jesse, I'll check you. Jesse, my brother Jesse called me. Said George, I bet where the city room day. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Okran. Welcome. Say George, I bet where. Oh, you want a book? How much, please? 5,000 Ghana. Thank you, very much. Please. Uh, let me make this clear. Don't be mentioning the money according to my height. Use Chairman General's height. Yeah, 5,000 Ghana. Thank you very much, ladies. You can go there. There's more. 
Wow, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for my brother, CEO of Foresight TV, Mr. Ignis Hego, $1,000. Solid. All right, so we're going to watch another testimonial video. Right after that, a surprise act comes on the stage. So we can fix it, our eyes on the screens. However, if you want a copy of the book, just show by hand. The ashes will come to you, and then um, you, can, you can get your copy. Do that. Thank you very much. Shall we see the videos, please? Of NGA. All the best. Hello. Hi, Kojo. Uh, good luck with the book launch today. Um, I'm trusting everything will go very well. Um, very, very insightful reading. Um, it's what really got me is the fact that you've been that reflective in your life's journey and also the link between your life's journey, your experiences, and how you've used that to redefine the set of paradigms that govern your life, which ultimately has led you into the unparalleled success that you've you've had um, in your career uh, both in the corporate world and obviously in public service as well i uh, hope all goes well excellent good luck um, sorry i couldn't be there but with you in spirit and cheering the book on um, my definite recommendation is that um, people do get a copy and um, get to learn what the secret recipe of um, the making of nga all the best Hello everyone, my name is Sari Rahman. I'm a, an ex-colleague and a friend of George Anda. Um, we're here to celebrate the launch of his book, um, which is another milestone in the step of a great man. George was somebody that was a really inspirational leader when he was working with us at Airtel Nigeria. He was our CMO, very inspirational, somebody who um, is not just um, able to get you the dollars and cents of why you need to do a thing, but also ties into the emotional, um, the emotional requirements that is needed for you to make something really successful, to build and to call out the passion in people. Um, George is a good guy. If you've, if you've ever worked with him before, if you've ever met him, he's a really good guy. And you know, you don't find a lot of those sort of people in the corporate sector. So um, he's somebody that we really look up to, somebody that we expect a lot of great things from. And I'm glad that this book, the, this book is another step in the rung of all the different things that we expect that he's going to achieve. He went on into public sector as well. If you know, if you know George for any, for eight, five, if you've known George for five minutes, you will know that George loves his country. He's always been big on how Ghana is such a great place. He's always, you know, very particular about all the things that needed to be done and all the wonderful things that Ghana is. Um, I am very proud of you. Um, I'm very impressed by the things you've been able to achieve. I'm impressed by the fact that you've stayed the course. All the things that you wanted to do, you are systematically going ahead and achieving them. So uh, more grease to your elbows, George. Uh, congratulations on your book launch. And I'm sure a lot of people will find a lot of inspirational and great things to learn from your book. So um, well done. And thank you, everyone, for listening to me. Take care. Bye. Hello everyone, my name is Geraldine Nate Ni Anda, George's big sister and de facto mum. I'm so proud of him today for what he's achieved. This book has been a long time coming, I think about two years, and at long last, today is the day. My only sad bit is I'm not there in person to be at the lunch, but I'm um, there in spirit and I'm so proud. The whole family is so proud of you, Nene. Love you and congrats, Ayuko. Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Enes Coranting, a lecturer and a partner at the Business Africa Consulting Group. What a privilege, what a blessing uh, this is to uh, say a few things about Nene George and uh, the celebrated NGA. <laughs> So nearly 15 years ago, I, I was blessed, got uh, the rare opportunity of meeting George. Uh, at the time, the, the lead for uh, the Joy Sports team across the multimedia uh, group. And we put out an innovation that caught the attention of 
uh, telecom giant MTN, of which uh, George was chief marketing officer, CMO at the time. He invited me over for a conversation, and that was the start of many big things for me. Uh, George uh, absolutely changed significant portions and aspects of my life uh, following that conversation. Uh, lessons I learned uh, from then on included the, the importance of value, value on self, value on teamwork, and value about life in general you know and uh, we all we all know george i mean if we want to spend time talking about george we won't finish today uh, george epitomizes a lot of wonderful things a lot of life's good virtues like hard work professionalism and how he's been able to utilize god's gift uh, you know and commitment to every course uh, he's, he's 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 been through uh, his entire life i mean they've all been demonstrable in 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 the role he's held across corporate world we all know his time from mtn sg ssb and uh, airtel glow and, and and all of that and also across politics and governance leading the people of eutu senior west and and his work as uh, deputy communications minister it's it's been a great privilege knowing george uh, over the years and as i indicated earlier this is someone who has taught me uh, remarkable lessons and on the occasion of of george putting out his book i, I can't wait to get copies for myself and my my partners and, and people i know across the bac group george from all of us at the bac group my family you know q and d and the boys we all uh, celebrate you we congratulate you today uh, it's always a big step to uh, put all of the experiences, the expertise, the things you have been through in this life uh, in a book that people uh, can read. This is one of the ways of extending the legacy. At least this will live for many, many years, uh, George. Uh, congratulations. I'm, I'm so eager to find out what you mean by determined to do more because I know what it is if you just want to do something little. How much more say do more? And how much more for you to say you're determined to do more? I look forward to this. So on this August uh, occasion, I want to say congratulations to you. Thank you for the inspiration over the years, the motivation and the support. You've been a great source of hope, a great source of help, a great source of inspiration to many of us. And we will never forget, George. God bless you for us. And whatever it is you are determined to do, Please, please keep doing it. And we pray for God's strength, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, enlightenment, vision, insight, life, and good health for you to achieve all of that God has given to you. It's always a pleasure. From all of us at the BAC Group, we say, George, we love you. My name is Mercedes Rory Asamini, the Political and Social Affairs Officer of the All African Student Union and the project assistant at CDD Planner. I have known Mr. George Anders since 2015. So I went to my constituency where I happened to be from as well. I'm a native of Port Jurassic, and I happened to see his billboards all over the place that he was contesting for the member of parliament for Ewutu Senior West. In fact, when I saw the billboards, I was excited and impressed because i had heard of mr george and uh, i know the good great things he had he did with scancom guinness ghana and other telcos so when i saw his billboard i was personally honored and kind of felt privileged that our constituency would have a personality like him representing us so i reached out to someone who could help me get his number and I was able to get in touch with him. And I messaged him, introduced myself to him. Then I was a new CC and a TESCON executive. So I introduced myself to him, introduced uh, strategies that I thought would help him in his campaign, for what I had seen in the constituency. I was a bit scared. Hello, everybody. Um... Thanks for having me. 
Thank you for having the presence to listen to me. I'm Dr. Randolph Ambala, um, a friend to Honorable George Amra. Um, to be honest, more like a brother. I've known George uh, throughout uh, my days working with him at Guinness Ghana Limited uh, and then to MTN. And then I consulted for him briefly whilst he was CEO of Glow. Since then, George has remained a brother, he's remained a family. I like to consider myself as one of the few people who have met and dealt with George for a long while to appreciate him as a person, a remarkable human being with a lot of great ideas, a great vision and a lot to offer to God and country. Um, on this day that uh, he is planning to launch the book, I, I will urge everybody to get a copy of the book. Um, the book offers insightful inner revelations of a remarkable man in the making. It reveals, for me, an important feature that all successful persons are first of all human beings who deal with the same frailties, fragilities, ambitions, thoughts, challenges that all humans deal with, but somehow have within them a remarkable self-belief, a remarkable almost divine level of faith to believe that every challenge is surmountable and strive in spite of the challenges towards greater heights. I see that as a great form of um, um, uh, motivation for the youth of today to appreciate the fact that successful people start from the basics and rise. And therefore, uh, there is within everybody perhaps an opportunity to make a mark. So go out there, grab your copies, and I wish you all well. Good evening. My name is Irajo Akai, and um, George Anda. The first time I heard the name George Anda was when I went to Achimota School. George was the dining hall prefect then. Yes, George was in charge of our food. Um, Minus acts. Right this man has done it all. He's seen it all. December 24th last year, he shut down the city of Accra with his never seen before experience concert. If you're as ready as I am, please give it up for my brother and friend, Samini. Let's hear it for Samini. Somebody tell me how everything end up in a mess. Me can't breathe. 
like judge, police got me on my neck. Yeah. Ah. Oh, Mama Africa, you should cry no more. Yeah. You talk today, ready for make a change. Yeah. Oh, Mama Africa, you should cry no more. You talk today, ready for make a change. Yeah. Take a look in at the DRC Can't believe the crazy things I see If you don't believe me, try hashtag Congo is bleeding You should go check Namibia My people still the hashtag Them say shut it all down Come and rule is fighting anglophone crisis Oh, 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 oh God Almighty Rep is a national emergency And that's the hashtag we see in Liberia People in Nigeria still the hashtag See and say Oh mama Africa You should cry no more yeah. You talk today Ready for make a change yeah. Oh mama Africa You should cry no more It's a privilege to be here. I'm more than honored to be here, and I would rather be here than anywhere else tonight. Um, just to take a few seconds to talk about my relationship with man like Mr. George Ander. Long story short, the biggest endorsement deal for me in my career happened through my link with Mr. George Ander. And lo and behold, up until today, I'm still connected with the biggest telco gram, I mean, a brand in the country, MTN Ghana. And um, I must say, big thank you to Mr. George Ander for that opportunity because that was like one of the biggest milestones in my career. Big up yourself, Grandpapa Reggie Rockstone. I see you. You know, for such an endorsement at that age, at that time, at that point in my career, I knew that this called for more work, this called for more content, more reasons why it would make sense for such a brand to associate itself with me. And end of the day, that made me who I am today. Big up Mr. George Ander, wherever you are. And this right here is an example of things that you will, you know, set the pace for people like us to want to emulate. So if I ever launch a book, then you just know where I got inspired from. Big up George, let me do a couple more songs and then the program continues. A chick. <laughs> to make mistakes. The whole world is one big place. You don't need to run the rat race. Human race. We don't party no. Oh, 
nothing left for lazy man. There will be no food for lazy man. When you can't come and this out, you'll be in my own. Oh, 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 When you're chilling on that sofa, no, no. I keep that pace, only celebrate when the when the race is over. Na 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 na. Pass up to your own, and let them do their own. Everybody got their own. Remember there will be nothing left for lazy man There will be no food for lazy man no. Min ya ka kumban di sao ka bien bayo Oh 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 ka bien bayo Min ya ka kumban di sao ka bien bayo no. Oh 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 ka bien bayo Yo ka yo Da 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 Chop 
and gentlemen, as the book is launched, I'm gonna go get my copy. Make sure you get your copy before you leave here. And cheers! Hello. Right, his name is Samini. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. And we'd still like to thank you all for your um, support. Uh, we've been supported on this event by the Labadi Beach Hotel. And um, at this point, I think it would be pertinent that we do a little presentation to them. But before we get to that, let me thank Oko Quist. Also thanking Kwabana um, Boateng. Linda Boache, thank you very much. Nana Defibuedu, thank you very much. Antoinette Tibudako, thank you very much. Tibudako, yes, uh, that's from the Dangwa Institute, yes. And then, um, of course, my brother and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Rockstone, thousand dollars there, thank you very much. We are very, very, very grateful. It looks like George is swamped. But we're truly, truly grateful to the Labadi Beach Hotel for their support. Also to MTN Ghana for your support. And um, Aini and everybody else who supported this event, we're truly grateful. I think where we are now... I cannot get George on stage, obviously not. That's not going to happen. So um, I think we should do the vote of thanks. Let's do the vote of thanks and then um, we can um, call it an evening for now. But we're truly grateful to the Labadi Beach Hotel and to everybody else who has supported this event. We are very grateful. If Kobe could please join me on stage, Kobe Anda. Kobe will do the vote of thanks for us. And we also do have some um, refreshment in the foyer. We can still network and interact. And you can still get your books, obviously. We are not gone yet. You can still get your books. Yes. Thank you. Chairman, His Excellency Isaac Osebos. It's, too, it's so difficult getting you out of the wagons, huh? <laughs> there, there could have been no better choice for a chairman than you. I mean, you and George go a long way. You've been part of his journey from the nine nine days when you used to go and catch golden fish. In the, river, in the lake in Roman Ridge. I know the two of you are brothers. The two of you influence each other. You distinguished yourself today. The program went on smoothly without any hitch. And we thank you very much for that. We also thank the publishers and the production team. We know how difficult it could be. Everybody's saying nice things about George, but George is a perfectionist. And when you work with a perfectionist, he demands only the best. And uh, it couldn't have been easy. Uh, his eye for detail, making sure he, everything was done properly. Um, we are thankful that you were able to work and bring such a beautiful production. Um, when George, Mr. Chairman, when George told us that he was writing a book, this was like five years ago, um, I expected him to write a technical book, a book on marketing, leadership, um, digital strategy. Um, he has so much to share academically. And then he said, no, he was writing uh, an autobiography. And I said, um, you're not 50, you're writing an autobiography. Um, typical Ghanaians, you know, we don't read and we don't even write. Then I realized that if you go through his story, he would need more than one volume. It couldn't have been one volume. You go through George's life from um, growing up in Roman Rage, when he was a member of the People's Defense Committee, when he was maybe seven or something, when he went to Motown, the leadership roles he played, he opened his first business, I think it was just after university. Um, he has so much, achieved so much, and um, it, it, we are waiting for the next volume. But we should thank God for having made us live George's journey with him to be part of his uh, life, his distinguished life. We are proud of him and we are grateful to God for giving us a brother, a husband, a father, 
a cousin, and a friend, a true friend, a sincere and honest friend such as George. For today's event, um, Honorable uh, Paul Kroma is not here, he's left, but um, he was distinguished. And um, Kwame, is Kwame Sefekai here? When, when we were told Kwame was going to be the one who was going to conduct the auctioning, I immediately had to call um, the bank that uh, I think I'll need more money. Because knowing Kwame, you couldn't just get away with <laughs> just anything. And he actually proved it. So Kwame, thank you very much. We thank the clergy. We thank everybody. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. We started with God, and we will not close without God. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, let me invite Reverend Father Joseph Okankwate, if he's around, to give us a short prayer. The prayer doesn't mean we have closed. We're just doing the formalities before everybody disappears. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Lord and Master, at the beginning of this program, we, call upon, we called upon your help. And you have seen us through the program and have brought us to a successful end. As we part to our various destinations, we ask that you give us safe passages back home. We go back home determined to do more. And so we ask you to bless each and every one of us, bless our intentions, and bless all who have supported this program. May we always feel the power of your hand at work in our lives. And as you give us strength from rest tonight, may we wake up tomorrow morning poised to do more for you, for our neighbors, for our country. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, officially, this is the end of our book launch. Thank you all very much for being a part of it. So the team that put it together, it's a very, very tall list. I wouldn't want to go into names, but God richly bless each and every one of you. Um, George is still here. And um, a very, very big thanks again going out to the Labadi Beach Hotel. They've been very, very, very supportive. And George will do a special presentation to them, which will be captured by the photographs right over there. We should have done it on stage, but as you can see, he is swamped. So we're going to do it over there. But Labadi Beach Hotel, we're truly, truly grateful for your support. Thank you so very much. And hey, go out there, grab a copy of the book. It's going to inspire you. Thank you very much. Good night.